Hey guys. मुंबई सिटी के ऊपर है और उसका टाइटल है मुंबई इंडिया ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग तो देखते हैं और Its contiguous urban population is nearing 25 million and its land is surrounded by water, making it the world's second most densely populated major city. But there's hope that a set of five transportation mega projects that are under construction simultaneously throughout the city will ease the movement of people and goods and help position it to become a global power center by the middle of the century. This is Mumbai, the transforming mega city. Surrounded by the Arabian Sea, Mumbai, which means mother in Marathi, the local language, is the heart of the state of Maharashtra, the second most populous country subdivision on earth and the single largest contributor to India's economy. What was a group of islands were by 1845 merged into one landmass through multiple land reclamation projects. But it was a turning point in American history that did arguably the most to place Mumbai on its modern path. Had it not been for the Civil War in the United States, Mumbai probably wouldn't have been as important a city as it is today. That source of raw cotton for the newly industrialized England suddenly dried up due to the Civil War. Simultaneously, they managed to open the Suez Canal, which cut the journey to London. into one third so what was the 90 day journey became a 30 day journey when you come out of the suez and come out of the red sea the port dead ahead was mumbai so mumbai just happened to be in the right place at the right time with the whole of maharashtra's rich cotton growing culture so one of the things the british brought to us with the railways mainly to move goods from the hinterland directly to the port and the port really grew like mad today mumbai seaport handles most of the container traffic entering and exiting india creating many jobs for its residents ramesh shinde commutes by train to work at the port or we're going to ship building company mazagon dock building submarines we've already built 5 submarines and we're currently building the 6th the prospect of good stable employment has been attracting people from across india for decades in india we have a huge problem of people migrating to the metros you can't prevent people from coming to the city of mumbai they have as much right to come here as any other indian you either figure out how to make things better or you vote in people who figure out how to make things better the challenge is that the city's population has grown far faster than their government's ability to build infrastructure and it's been happening for so long now that no matter who they elect there's a lot of catching up to do infrastructure was being built to try and keep up with the needs of the city but from the 1970s onward we had a lot of setbacks in spending money we had a complete lack of foresight so you know when you reach 10 million people and your infrastructure is good for two and you bring up your infrastructure to 10 million people by the time you do that it's already surpassed 15 million and it's inadequate to close the gap five massive transportation builds are happening at the same time the first is the mumbai metro one of the most ambitious and important transit initiatives in history right now our suburban railway is lifeline of mumbai this suburban railway carries uh, around 9 million passengers the new metro network which we are creating will be carrying around 7 million or 8 million passengers we are almost doubling it gigantic tunnel boring machines are being used to construct eight lines at the same time through the living city they can't come soon enough the existing suburban railway is completely maxed out carrying three times more passengers than originally intended Not only is this extremely stressful, it's dangerous. Around 2000 people die every year on these tracks. Conditions that cause constant delays. 
There is no fast train, and it doesn't come on time. If the train on the central line doesn't come on time, then we miss the connecting western line train. It is difficult to get on the train for a non-Mumbiker. It can get very crowded. I'm a local, and I can't even get on the Virar train. The first two above-ground metro lines opened earlier this year to positive reviews. With the metro, we sit in air conditioning and travel for 30 rupees. So it is very convenient. Otherwise, imagine how much money one would spend on a taxi or a rickshaw. The most important arterial line will run 33 kilometers under many of Mumbai's most historic buildings. It's going to be the first underground metro that the city is going to uh, witness. I live right outside what is going to be an underground metro station soon. I think it's going to make traveling very convenient. And it's underground, so there is very little damage to the built heritage or built parts of the city. The way the networks are being built right now, it's made connectivity so much easier and convenient. You get on from your railway station, you have a skywalk that's connecting you to a metro line, and from there, directly home. I remember speaking to R.A. Rajiv. He said that while the first metro project took about 10 years, they were really hoping to make the rest of the lines quicker. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that happen in the rest of the city, the suburbs. The current plan is for 14 lines to make up a 360-kilometer network. It'll also help ease traffic congestion. The road is very, very stressful. Clutch brake, clutch brake. There's a lot of traffic. Driving a car is very difficult. And what's more difficult than driving is parking. That's also a problem. No parking space. Mumbai's layout means its most popular areas are in its southern end, like Bollywood, India's booming film and media industry. Many of its stars live in Bandra, a lush, upscale neighborhood. A little further south is the city's historic heart, home to government agencies, the main business district and university, luxury hotels, and famous landmarks, including the Gateway of India, the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus Railway Station, and the ensemble of Victorian and Art Deco buildings that face each other across Oval Maidan Park. However, this area is so congested that it can take well over an hour to get to the airport by car. That's where project number two comes in. The coastal road will be a 29.2 kilometer expressway that will cut this travel time to just 20 to 25 minutes when it opens next year. As a civil engineer, it's a dream project. It has everything that a civil engineer can dream of, including reclamation, seawall, bridges, tunnel. We've had some world records on this also. We've had 456 meters of mining in a month, which has never happened. The Coastal Road project was a dream in India, and now it is being built. So there is a lot of progress in India. The project also creates 10.5 kilometers of non-stop waterfront promenade with various green spaces and will improve ease of travel to Sanjay Gandhi National Park, the world's largest tropical urban forest. However, the highway will also be a massive concrete barrier that cuts off much of the seafront, replacing that view with loud vehicle traffic. Cautionary tales of such an approach can be found in the U.S. cities of Seattle and Boston, which recently spent billions to open up access to their precious waterfronts by tearing down viaduct highways to reroute traffic through newly dug tunnels instead. Other concerns include encouraging more car ownership, which could make air pollution and traffic worse, that it neglects the needs of carless residents who make up a majority of the city's population, and it seems to ignore perhaps the city's biggest threat. When you build roads which are one kilometers into the sea, you need more roads to be built to connect that. You're increasing your built infrastructure. That increases cost, that increases um, the damage that you're doing to the environment. You're reclaiming your uh, seas for this. At a time when there is a threat of the city submerging, we need to seriously think about whether a coastal road is really going to benefit the city 50 years down the line. Are we going to see more waterlogging incidents during the rain? None of that has really been thought of. 
Moon bikers call elevated highways, like the coastal road, flyovers. Another one is the Sari Worli Connector, the third major project. It will cut through the island, so vehicles can cross the city uninterrupted from coast to coast. This taxi driver is constantly navigating its construction. Based on conversations with his customers, he has a good idea of how this new piece of infrastructure will be used. When the bridge is built, the locals who have to go into the suburbs will go from below. The rest of the people will go up over the flyover. So we first had a whole series of flyovers in Mumbai, but they were all north-south. So east-west connectivity was terrible. Kurush lives in the satellite city of Navi, Mumbai, which will benefit from the fourth project. The Trans Harbour Link is a 21.8 kilometer bridge for vehicles to quickly cross the bay-like inlet of the Arabian Sea that separates the island city from the Indian mainland. When it opens this year, it will be the longest sea bridge in the country. It is not just a transportation corridor. It is an, be an engine of economic growth. So what this bridge does is, actually it brings the mainland within a distance of 12 to 15 minutes, adding a huge land parcel to Mumbai. With the bridge in place, the fifth project makes a lot of sense. The Navi Mumbai International Airport will provide what many other global cities already have, one airport dedicated to international flights and a second for domestic travelers. With an urban area nearly twice as dense as the national capital, it is vital that Mumbai's transportation system works. So even though these five big projects have taken decades, now that the steel has been laid and the concrete poured, an even more ambitious vision is emerging. The city has transformed. We're moving towards becoming a megapolis. We're looking at something all the way to the Gujarat border in the north, to Murbad in the east, and to Mangaon on the Bombay-Goa highway in the south. That is what we've realized the city of Mumbai is going to be. And that's the Mumbai metropolitan region ultimately. But an example of the constantly evolving trade-offs to continual development is Gurai, a part of the city that has remained fairly immune to its sprawl. Lying just across Minori Creek, it is only accessible from the south by ferry. In the evening, the place is totally deserted. You don't feel like you, you are in Mumbai. This is a beautiful place. Hillary has seen firsthand just how fast things are changing. Well, people are crazy for money. Everybody wants a fast line. Yeah, everybody has sold a property. Before it was, there was not a single wall over here. Now since you buy the property, you construct your own wall. Hillary says he's content, making about eight US dollars a day, even though he has to spend hours driving 15 kilometers to the closest compressed natural gas pump and wait in line each time he needs to fill up. Authorities want to build a bridge to connect Garai and its beaches to the rest of the city. They say this will give residents like him more services, like gas pumps. They will give you options. If you need a gas pump over here, we have to construct the bridge. To win something, you're losing something. But if, if they construct the bridge and all, the beauty of this place is going to vanish. Now land grows and everything, everything will be disappeared over here. No land will be saved. So even though his income could improve, he doesn't want the bridge. He thinks it'll ruin the relatively quiet life he and his wife enjoy among the water-absorbing mangrove ecosystem that helps protect them from rising seas and storm flooding. Most of the rest of Mumbai's mangroves have been completely destroyed. Nobody else is destroying the nature. We ourselves are destroying the nature and we are blaming the nature. What nature can do? Nature needs to stand still. Take care of the nature. Everything will be fine. If you play with the nature, you have to pay the fine. If you cooperate with the nature, nature will cooperate with you. So उसके लिए आप different projects, mega projects आ रहे हैं, जैसे कि एक coastal road, coastal road बन रही है, फिर trains के लिए नया system metros का बिछाया जा रहा है, फिर साथ में कुछ और bridges बनाए जा रहे हैं, flyovers बनाए जा रहे हैं, तो इससे ना अब ये वो तो बनाए तो जा रहे हैं, लेकिन अब कुछ लोगों का इसमें concerns भी आ रहे हैं कि वो कहते हैं कि इससे अगर सब जैसे कि coastal road के ऊपर आप, आप 
और इस तरह आप जितने मुंबई पॉपुलेटेड सिटी है तो जितने भी डिफरेंट एरियाज हैं जो कि भी नहीं आबाद हुए हुए जहाँ पर ग्रीनरी वगैरह है तो उसे भी खत्म करके वहाँ पे कोई सोसाइटीज या घरों को या फिर कोई ऑफिस बना दी जाएंगे तो जो ब्यूटी है नेचर की वो खत्म हो जाएगी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ये लोग क्या ये लोगों का मानना है हर जगह हर चीज के प्रोज एंड कॉन्स तो होते हैं तो अब बिकॉज इसकी पॉपुलेशन इतनी ज्यादा हो चुकी है तो उन्हें एक जो गवर्नमेंट्स है उनको तो कुछ करना पड़ेगा उसके बगैर तो गुजारा नहीं हो पाएगा वरना लोग तो तीन 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 घंटे बेचारे ट्रैफिक में फंसे रहेंगे तो उसका तो गवर्नमेंट तो अच्छा सोचती है कि इन लोगों के लिए एक डिफरेंट मेट्रो सिस्टम कम्प्यूट का कोई सिस्टम बना दिया जाए रोड बना दी जाए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बेहतर किया जाए ताकि लोग आ जा सकें तो ये डिफरेंट मेट्रा और नवी मुंबई एयरपोर्ट बनाया जा रहा है मुंबई में नवी मुंबई में तो ये भी दिखाया गया इसमें डिफरेंट प्रोजेक्ट्स थे उसमें ये भी शामिल था तो ओवरऑल बात यही है कि जी के मेगा प्रोजेक्ट्स जो जो मुंबई में सही लग रहे हैं बनाए जा रहे हैं इससे मुंबई की एक नई शक्ल भी आएगी और बेहतर मेरे ख्याल से तो बेहतर होगा बिकॉज अब लोगों को खत्म तो नहीं कर सकते आप जो लोग रहते हैं उनको तो आप नहीं मना कर सकते आप इस सिटी में नहीं आ सकते तो लोगों ने मैनेज भी तो करना है तो मैनेज के लिए यही है कि आप उसका इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इस तरह बेहतर करें और ऑप्शन कोई रहती नहीं है तो इससे मुंबई एक पहली मुंबई इतना पैसा कमा के देता है इतना जनरेट करता है पैसा इतनी इकोनॉमी को हेल्प करते हैं इंडिया की तो ऑब्वियसली तो वो डिजर्व भी करता है कि उस पर खर्चा किया जाए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बेहतर किया जाए और मुंबई में यही है ना कि पॉपुलेशन ज्यादा होने की वजह से सबसे मेन मसला जो ना वो ट्रैफिक का ही है क्योंकि आप बहुत ज्यादा हर बंदा अफोर्ड कर सकता है गाड़ी रिक्शा बाइक या स्कूटर जो कोई भी चीज है तो उस वजह से ना ट्रैफिक कहते हैं इस कदर हो जाती है कि एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाने के लिए ना आपको हर सेकंड हर मिनट बहुत बहुत घंटे वेट करना पड़ा तो इसके लिए रोड्स के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ऊपर काम हो रहा है रेलवे के ऊपर जो काम किया जा रहा है उसकी मेन रीजन यही है ताकि आम आदमी के लिए ईजी हो जाए एक जगह से दूसरी जगह ट्रेवल करना और जैसे कोस्टल रोड जो बन रही है उसका भी यही एक मेन पॉइंट यही है कि ट्रैफिक को कम किया जा सके और जो जितनी ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन है उसके अकॉर्डिंग आवाम जो इजीली एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाए तो मुंबई का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ऊपर वाकई में काम हुआ है और जो मेन प्रोजेक्ट से दिखा रहे हैं हम लोगों ने पहले भी देखे हुए वही वो बता रहे थे कि ये उनकी खूबसूरती बढ़ाने से ज्यादा उनके जो पॉपुलेशन को कंट्रोल कंट्रोल तो नहीं लेकिन पॉपुलेशन को किस तरह से मैनेज करना उसके लिए सारी रोड्स का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बहुत जरूरी है इस वक्त लाइक मेन टारगेट इसमें वही है तो आप लोग बताएगा जो लोग मुंबई से देख रहे हैं क्या आप लोगों को वाकई में ट्रैफिक का बहुत ज्यादा इशू रहता है और जो जो प्रोजेक्ट्स बन रहे हैं क्या समझते हैं कि इससे जो ट्रैफिक का मसाइल है वो खत्म होंगे या कम होंगे तो जरूर कमेंट्स में या फीडबैक में जरूर बताया करो क्या आप लोगों का टेक केयर ऑन दिस वीडियो और अगर रिएक्शन अच्छा लगा हो तो लाइक शेयर सब्सक्राइब कर देना मुलाकात करेंगे एक और वीडियो के साथ तब तक के लिए ज्यादा दो अल्लाह